Hi, my name is Alan Med. I'm president and business agent of Amalgamated Transit Union Local 1624. We proudly represent all of the operators and mechanics for Coach Canada and Megabus, as well as operators at AZ Bus Tours in Mississauga. This local has been the face of change uh, for legislation in the over-the-road busing industry for the last three years. Fatigue is a huge, huge issue in our business. Currently, as I have said many times before, we can potentially be behind the wheel of a bus for 13 hours a day, work 16 hours a day, only have eight hours of core rest, and we're back in doing the same thing again tomorrow. Do you really want to be on a bus when the, your driver has been doing this for eight or nine or 10 days with four or five or six hours of rest? Currently, the stats show that in North America, 36% of all fatal motor coach accidents are, a cause, are caused by fatigue. Mechanical reasons, less than half of 1%. So where do you think the focus should lie? The focus should lie on fatigue and changing the hours of service so that operators are safe when they're driving the vehicles and get our passengers, your mothers, your fathers, your children, your sisters, your brothers, your grandparents safely to the destinations each and every day. We carry hundreds of thousands of passengers on a yearly basis. Does Canada really want to follow the U.S. model and have people dying on the roadways? It's interesting that the members, the members of ATU Local 1624, the majority, the vast, vast majority of our members are supportive of this campaign. We do have a few who have forgotten what the labor movement is all about, and it's not just about our own little world, it's about, and this campaign is about, making it safer not only for our operators, our customers, but our industry as a whole across Canada, and making sure that every company follows the legislative process and making it an even playing field. Our members in 1624, are fortunate enough to work for a company such as Coach Canada slash Megabus who have altered their own company policy to ensure that our drivers have to have 10 hours on the drive line and nine hours mandated core rest. We are the only company that does that. As a result, we're losing business because there are smaller companies out there, fly-by-night companies that are willing to do anything and everything to take business away uh, and, get, and get new clients. The clients themselves are so poorly educated with respect to this process that they think they're getting a better deal when they're actually going to be getting into a bus in which their health and safety and lives could be taken at risk. The biggest supporters are not only motor coach drivers from companies all across Canada and the United States, but the coalition we need to build is that with the public, the general public, our ridership. They are the ones that are going to assist us in putting this campaign over the top. At this current time, the Minister of Transportation, Lisa Raitt, even though she's had thousands of petitions land on her desk, has not either contacted this local or myself or anyone involved in this campaign to discuss the issues. Her staff is aware of the issues. The ministry is aware of the issues in our, and say themselves at conferences that these changes need to be made. However, Lisa Raitt has been strangely quiet on this issue. The program that is, has been promoted by Lisa Raitt and her counterpart from the FMCA in the United States to battle driver fatigue, to be quite honest, from our perspective, is a joke. It does nothing to help 
It puts the onus on the drivers to make sure they get eight hours sleep when they get home at night. However, the companies and the government are saying we only have eight hours total core rest. Some of us drive a half an hour, 15 minutes, an hour or more to get home. You're looking at drivers that are getting four hours of core rest. Your this legislative change in this this program that they have come up for come come up with, my apologies, is tantamount to putting a band-aid uh, on when you've got an appendicitis. Gives an aspirin for appendicitis. It doesn't deal with the issues. It's just a a uh, another government cover-up of a very serious problem. <clears throat> At the recent Ontario Federation of Labour Conference, it it certainly became we became aware that it this issue is an issue for all unions and for all unions to support. Don't have to be ATU or CAW or OPSU or Unifor. It is it's a joint union issue. Sid Ryan from the Ontario Federation of Labour has come out totally in support of this and is showing our videos and and posting the, his our petition on his websites, etc. And so is the ATU International and so is the Canadian Council. This is a cross-country, cross-North America issue. It's an issue of health and safety not only for our operators, but as I've said many, many times before, the general public. And the general public needs to become more aware of this issue. Our recent articles in the Ottawa Life magazine have certainly brought the whole issue to the forefront politically in, in Ottawa and surrounding area, but with, with the general public. It's had a significant impact, more people are paying attention, and in fact the next issue of Ottawa Life magazine will have a reply from David McGinty of the Federal Liberal Party and Olivia Chow of the federal NDP party, both of whom are in support of this very, very necessary legislation. Our only problem now is getting Lisa Raitt, the minister, to respond. ATU International and Larry Hanley have been absolutely amazing in supporting this cause, as well as Canadian Council of the ATU and their director, Mr. Michael Mahar. In fact, uh, the Canadian Council donated $8,000 towards the Ottawa Life article and continue to support us financially and will be going to an upcoming conference with us to support and speak on the issue as well. Larry Hanley will be making a video presentation to be presented at the next conference we go to as well and hopefully we'll be able to post that in the near future. I want everybody to take a look at our petition online. When you look at the petition, take a look at the bus crash in the picture. How many people have to die before Lisa Raid stands up and changes this legislation? There was a tragic, tragic accident involving a train at Lac Megantique this past summer. And I believe there were 47 people died in that tragic accident. Lisa Raitt stepped up and made lots of legislation changes after the fact. We want her to have some foresight this time instead of hindsight and step up and change the legislation before one bus carrying 56 or 81 people goes off the road and multiple deaths occur. Hello, my name is Ken Angus. I'm Grievance Chairman at ATU Local 1624 in Mississauga. I'd like to take a few moments to speak to you about driver fatigue. In the motor coach industry in Canada, federal regulations mandate that a driver can drive a motor coach for up to 13 hours a day over a 16 hour period. 
Within that 16 hour work period, the driver is required to take a minimum of two hours off duty time. So that actual work day is 14 hours and actual time on the drive line that is driving the motor coach can be up to 13 hours a day. The things that, that worry me most are uh, you become less aware of what's going on around you in terms of traffic on the road. You become tired, mind starts to wander a little bit, and the attentiveness just isn't there to the level it should be. After a few days of working in that environment, you get up out of bed tired. So you're starting the day tired, the safety issues that are mandatory to be done get done, but over the course of the day, the work really drags on you. You know, the biggest factor for fatigue is sleep deprivation. And uh, it's a major issue in this industry. The fact of the matter also is that Although there are a number of carriers that operate under the current federal legislation, there's a significant number of carriers that do not operate within the current legislation because they're privately held or, or work outside of the, the laws. So the challenge is in the hands of the legislators to change the legislation to a point that the number one priority, as we are all taught when we get into this into this industry, is the safety of our passengers. And fatigue does not lend itself to creating a safe work environment for our passengers. Part of that is because from time to time you feel like a robot. Bus drivers are people too. I find it um, difficult to understand how I, as a motor coach operator, can be expected to drive 13 hours a day in a 16 hour work shift for 14 days in a row without fatigue affecting me in some way. It, to me it's absurd that I'm allowed to drive 13 hours in a 16 hour time period for 14 days in a row before I get one day off. So it physically, I don't, no one can do that. It's, it's absurd in my opinion. When I have to work 60, 70, 80 hours in a, in a week, um, I have no personal life because I'm working and I'm sleeping and that's, that's your life at that point. Hi, I'm Ian Laird, President and Business Agent of Local 1415, representing drivers for Greyhound Canada in Eastern Canada. I wanted to address the impact of the North American Fatigue Management Program that was implemented this past summer. Although we are excited to see the issue of driver fatigue being of concern to the U.S. and Canadian government, I don't feel the tool is enough to fully address the issue of driver fatigue. For instance, the Fatigue Management Program addresses the need to provide information on how to develop a corporate culture that facilitates reduced driver fatigue. However, motor coach drivers such as ourselves are governed by legislation and may not be able to make the necessary changes on our own. Instilling driver fatigue 
as a serious issue that needs to be dealt with is one thing, but actually being able to listen to our drivers and be able to implement the necessary changes is critical. Even a change involving a distinction in legislation between motor coach vehicles and trucks will make a difference. In closing, I'd just like to offer Alan Med in 1624 all the support of 1415 as we both do represent drivers that are over the road that are under this legislation. We feel it is an unsafe bill and should be changed. Hello, my name's uh, Ken Sundberg. I'm the financial secretary for ATU Local 1415. And just like our uh, brothers and sisters over at Local ATU 1624, uh, we're interested and concerned about uh, what's going on with our members and we're well, very well aware of uh, driver coach uh, uh, motor vehicle issues and what's going on with our vehicles and with our drivers and uh, we're concerned about some of the current issues. The driver fatigue petition that has been circulated by 1624 uh, is of interest to us. Um, it was started hoping to convince the public to convince passengers and the Minister of Transportation to change the hours of service legislation. We feel that the changes are more than reasonable and will help keep our roadways safe. According to Transport Canada, it is estimated that about 20% of fatal collisions involve driver fatigue. We want to lower this number and to prevent future incidents of driver fatigue related deaths from happening. My name is Frank Marsh, I'm a Driver Executive Board Member for ATU Local 1415. As a Board Member, I have direct contact with members to hear their concerns. Driver fatigue is a concern among our members and it should be the concern of the government, our riders and the public. According to Canadian Safety Council, driving while fatigued is comparable to driving drunk, only there is not the same uh, social stigma attached. Like alcohol, fatigue affects our ability to drive by slowing reaction time, decreasing awareness and impairing judgment. One of the current legislative changes requested by ATU Local 1624 is making a distinction between motor coach vehicles and trucks. Truck drivers to a certain extent can make their own schedule and rest when they need to. Motor coach drivers have strict schedules which doesn't allow for much downtime. Not to mention the fact that while truck drivers deliver cargo, motor coach drivers also deliver cargo in the form of precious lives. When a driver is overtired, all of those lives are at risk, including other drivers on the road. We need to put a stop to overwork motor coach drivers to keep everybody safe. Hello, my name is Mike Mahar, Director of the Amalgamated Transit Union Canadian Council. I want to talk to you about a very important issue we have uh, going on right now. When it comes to driver fatigue in Canada, we're behind the United States on this very important issue. One of the Amalgamated Transit Union's goals is to make transportation safe for drivers, passengers and the public. Driver fatigue in the States has received a lot more attention, in part because of the rate of incident of fatigue related deaths is statistically higher than Canada. The Driver Fatigue Prevention Act legislation was introduced in the States and has brought an increased awareness of the issue of fatigue related deaths. Members of the ATU are pushing to have that act implemented here in Canada to garner further attention and invoke much needed change. The issue of fatigue needs to be taken more seriously here and recognized and supported not just by drivers or the ATU but by the community at large. To help generate awareness for driver fatigue, ATU Canada recently provided $7,500 to pay for campaign marketing initiatives for a feature in Ottawa Life magazine. Alan Med, President and Business Agent of Local 1624, is heading up the driver fatigue initiative here in Canada. The ATU has been a proud supporter of Alan and his local's efforts in increasing public awareness behind the issue of driver fatigue. We hope that with the additional exposure, more Canadians will become aware and sign a petition urgently requesting the Minister of Transport to change legislation that Local 1624 has put forward. This year we've put a lot of focus on two of our major concerns for ATU members. One concern being assaults on bus drivers, and the other concern is fatigue-related incidents on our roadways. Unfortunately, 
the issue of fatigue is not getting much media attention, and it should be at the forefront, along with assaults. We are in the business of transporting passengers, so safety is a major concern for us, and it should be for our passengers, as well as the public. If fatigue-related incidents are more in the spotlight, the Minister of Transport will have no choice but to listen to an overwhelming majority of people asking for the change that needs to happen. It is not enough to expect this industry to regulate itself. With the deregulation of routes, there's been a lot of smaller companies that have popped up. They just don't provide for the staff to follow the rules and there's too much incentive for them to violate hours of rest and those types of things. Recent accidents that we've seen happen with Canadian companies show that this legislation has to be put in place. The ATU wants legislative changes to happen now to prevent further incidents of driver fatigue deaths from occurring. We don't want to wait for a major incident to happen to bring attention to this very important issue. But unfortunately, that's what usually ends up happening. So we urge everyone to sign the petition on the ATU 1624 website and advocate for changes in legislation around motor coach drivers' hours of service. The requests being put forward are well within reason and can only be addressed by voicing your concern for modifications to the current laws. Signing the petition will take a minute of your time and can save countless lives. Remember, together we can make a difference.